What's going on guys? It's Ryan from Sawdust and Stuff and I needed a new desk for my home office. And so I put my brain to work and today I'm going to show you how I made the ultimate work from home desk. As many projects do, this one started out at the local sawmill. I was stumbling around many piles of wood and came across the perfect piece of walnut for my upcoming desk that I had been dreaming about. So I paid for it and we put it on the router flattening table and we got this thing flat as can be in no time. The very first thing I did with this slab in my shop was get rid of all the bark. I see a lot of people posting final pictures of their products they've made and they leave the bark on the live edge. And quite frankly, I think that looks pretty trashy. So I'm gonna pull the bark off of mine. Now there's many ways to go ahead and get rid of bark on a live edge piece like this. There's the draw knife, a chisel, the cuts all shaping disc, even just a sander will work. I kind of use a combination of all three. I grab the draw knife to get any big chunks I could off the live edge and then I grab the sander and cleaned it up from there. There were two imperfections in the slab that I wanted to take care of. The first one was a knot about the size of a hot dog bun. It sits right where my computer mouse will be moving most and so I knew I needed to get this thing done perfectly. I used Tyvek tape on the bottom side of the slab to cover up the knot and make sure that no epoxy would leak through. I've had that issue before and I hate dealing with that. Then I pulled out some water-based polyurethane, put a clear coat right on top of the knot on the top side and covered it with silicone. These two things make sure that the epoxy doesn't leak much and if it does, that it won't soak any pigment into the surrounding grain around that knot. Then I pulled out the epoxy and mixed enough to fill this knot, making sure I did a little extra because usually there's some area that that epoxy finds its way into that you don't know exists. When working with epoxy, it's really important to have the right measurements for your mixture. I use these cups that have the measurements right on the side of them so I can't go wrong, and I find that that is the best way to make sure the epoxy cures correctly. When pouring epoxy into a knot just like this, you're gonna wanna fill it up let it seep all the way down and come back a few minutes later and top it back off. You'll find air bubbles and such on the top. You can just use a heat gun to get rid of any of that. Once the epoxy is cured, you're gonna have to get rid of the excess somehow. I like to grab a heat gun and a putty knife type thing and heat that epoxy up just enough to let yourself slide that putty knife underneath it. Be careful not to overheat it because you will ruin the epoxy if you do that. The second imperfection in this slab was a crack on the left hand side. I tried filling it with epoxy but it leaked out on me and so I grabbed my Rangate knot filler and went to work. 
This product is basically a giant hot glue gun that's got knot filler inside of it. You go ahead and you gob it into the knot or void in your wood, and then you take their aluminum cooling block until it solidifies, usually about 10 seconds or so, and then you just use their chisel they provide to scrape off all the excess. On the larger voids, I'll oftentimes have to go over it a second time just to fill in any of the tiny little imperfections that it leaves behind. After two times, I usually have it exactly how I want it. I'll just sand it off and get ready to move on. After I got all the imperfections taken care of, I sanded up to 120 grit, water popped, and sanded up to 180 grits. That's as far as I'll need to go for this project. If you'd rather not watch me sand this desk, you can go ahead and spend the next few seconds liking this video and subscribing to the channel. To square off my desk, I grabbed my track saw, but you could also get the same effect with a circular saw, jigsaw, or really any saw that you've got laying around. Once the first side was square, I measured 60 inches from both corners and made a second cut, leaving as much material on the desk as possible. I decided to install C-channel on the underside of this desktop to prevent any damage from seasonal wood movement. I laid out the C-channel where I wanted it and marked it with a pencil, which would identify where the grooves for this C-channel would need to be routed out. I grabbed my router on a straight edge and I set the knobby thingy so that I could do repeatable cuts on all four grooves without any difficulty. And then using that adjustment depth thing, I took two passes for each groove, making sure I eliminated enough material for that C-channel to sit flush with the underside of the desk. If you haven't caught on by now, I'm a big fan of reference measurements, or a measurement where I don't actually measure anything, I just reference the project itself and mark accordingly. C-Channel is designed to be installed using threaded inserts, so I grabbed some from Amazon and got those installed. You can find any of the products I'm using in this video in the description below. Look at that, a perfect fit. Doug Mockett and company was kind enough to sponsor this video by sending me some of their products to use on this desk free of charge. Included in that was the wireless phone charger that I'll be installing underneath this desk and a pop-up outlet that has three outlets and two USB ports. 
you'll have to make sure and check out Doug Mockett's website if you have any upcoming projects and you want to add a little extra pizzazz. Since I'm right-handed, along with most of the world, I put the electronics in the right-hand corner of this desk. I drew my little lightning bolt out and marked dead center and aligned that with the center of the outlet. Since I'll be using the CNC to cut out the pockets for this desk, I needed a zero zero point on the top and bottom surface for this lightning bolt. To do that, I just grabbed a drill and drilled all the way through that, knowing that it would later be filled with epoxy. I wasn't patient enough to wait for the CNC for all the cuts I needed to make, so I decided to use the chisel on this lightning bolt. This is a terrible mistake, and as you can see, I have no experience using my chisels, but the end effect was okay, I guess. But for real, don't judge this hack job. It all turned out okay in the end. Like I said earlier, I'm going to use the CNC to cut out the pockets for the electronics. They're pretty simple cuts and this is the first cut on this CNC machine so I really hope it works out. I decided to cut out the outlet opening first because that one is much easier and less precise than the wireless charger cut. If something was going to go wrong on this machine, I wanted it to happen on the outlet cutout. I marked my zero with my touch probe and I programmed a four by eight inch pocket in the machine and I let it cut. Along with the wireless phone charger, Doug Mocket includes everything you need to install it. A Forstner bit, calipers, stop block, it's all there. But since we'll be using the CNC, we can set all of that aside and figure out how deep of a pocket we need to cut. To figure that out, we'll need to figure out how far the wireless phone charge can reach. So grab a deck of playing cards and one by one add a card on top of that wireless phone charger. If your phone starts charging, the charger is working. But unfortunately, there will be a time when the charge no longer reaches your phone. For me, that was about 15 playing cards or three millimeters. I'd rather be safe than sorry, so I actually threw a couple of these cards aside and used two millimeters as my measurement. I subtracted that from the 49 millimeter thickness of the desk and got to work on the CNC. On the CNC, I made two pocket cuts, one of them larger, which allowed the router to have clearance to make the exact two and one eighth inch opening that Doug Mockett recommends. Before applying finish, I sanded everything down one more time just to make sure I had it exactly how I wanted it. I decided to use Rubio Monocoat to finish this table because it goes on in one single coat and it leaves a nice satin finish. All you've got to do is wipe it on and buff it off.
all that's left is installing these electronics, which I'll show you in real time so you know just how easy it is. Off camera, I installed the desktop onto the base and completed this desk. Thanks for watching the video, guys. I'd love if you could like and subscribe to the channel and stick around to see more of this desk in action.